Good evening and welcome to the 575th Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is help, being held virtually with the GoToMeeting platform. The meeting agenda and the speaker sign-up request form were made public on May 5th, 2020 and are also on the city's website. Before I ask Ms. Quillen to start the roll, I would like to ask Robert Love, Deputy S Director for the City of Laurel, Department of Economic uh, and Community Development, to please let everyone on the line know what city employees are on the line joining us this evening. Robert? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, uh, Bill Goddard, City Administrator, should be joining us. We do have Lou Ann Crook, uh, Deputy City Administrator, on the, on the line. Uh, for, as far as ECD staff, we have uh, Christian Poli, uh, myself, Robert Love, uh, Brooke Quillen, Monte Burrow, and Josh Mitchum. Uh, we have Larry Tobb, the city solicitor on the line, and we also have uh, IT, IT staff on the line. Thank you. Ms. Quillen, if you will please call the roll. Council President Sidnor? Here. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Kish? Mr. Welford? Here. Ms. Bonner? Chairwoman Bettman? Here. You have a quorum, Chairwoman Bettman. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item two, the approval of minutes from the March 10th, 2020 meeting. Uh, we have each received those and reviewed those. If there are no questions for staff, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, and this Madam is Rick Chair. Wilson. I uh, move to approve the minute and pass it off to Mr. Welford. Uh, second that. Thank you. Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Wilson? I vote aye. Mr. Welford? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three. Uh, and Robert, let me just say, if you see either John or, um, or Christiana come in, if you would just let us know at that time, if you see any more come in. Moving on to it. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, variance application number 900 for 15409 Laurelton Drive, filed by Transforming Architecture for recommendation to the Board of Appeals. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioner members. Um, um, the application or the applicant is seeking approval of a variance to reduce the left side yard setback from eight feet as, standard, as stated in the city's unified land division code section 20-6.16 schedule of area yard and height regulations for residential uses to seven feet at the property located at 15409 Laurelton Drive, Laurel, Maryland, uh, zip code 2070. Um, zoned R5. The purpose of the variance is to allow for the replacement of an existing 10 foot by two, uh, 10 foot two inch by 18 foot by 11 carport garage that measures approximately 20 feet by 20 feet. Um, the purpose of the variance is that the applicant states that the existing carport cannot fit their vehicle. The proposed carport replacement would be um, in violation of the ULDC setback by one foot. Um, in addition to the carport, the applicant proposes to construct a screened-in porch and extend the driveway, both of which would be in compliance with the ULD setback and lot, uh, lot coverage standards if approved. Um, so, um, as you guys can see, this is the overhead view of the property. Um, and um, the City of Laurel Board of Appeals is authorized to grant a variance based on the uh, upon the criteria set forth in section 20-5, subsection D of the Unified Land Development Code, um, which states that by reason of accept exceptional narrowness, shallowness, or shape of specific parcels of the property at the time of the original enactment of this chapter or amendments. Um, and then section two, the such variance is the minimum reasonable necessary to overcome the foresaid exceptional conditions. 
Um, section three, or point number three, uh, such variance will not be detriment, uh, detrimental to the use and enjoyment of adjoining or neighboring properties. These provisions, however, shall not permit the board to grant any variances to any setbacks or yard requirements for the property zone in commercial or industrial purposes. Um, based on the applicant's application, they would uh, be in compliance with the provisions set forth in section 20-5, subsection P. Um, and the staff recommends that the City of Laurel Planning Commission recommend approval to the City of Laurel Board of Appeals for variance application number 900 with the following conditions. Uh, condition one, the applicant shall obtain all required City of Laurel building permits. The applicant shall obtain a City of Laurel right of way permit. And the applicant shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations in the uh, development of the property. Um, that concludes the report, Madam Chair. One. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Mr. Welford? No. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, just one. Did we get any, uh, did we notify the neighbors and we get anything back? Um, yes, sir. Um, we sent out a notice of the, the, the applicant actually um, placed a zoning, zoning sign that um, indicated that uh, what the variance was going to do on the property. Um, we also sent out certified letters um, for adjoining properties and um, we did not receive any objections to the variance as stated in the application. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Sidnor? I don't have any questions, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is for a recommendation to the Board of Appeals, which does not require a, a, a public hearing. However, I would like to just ask, um, since we're not all in the same room, if there is anyone signed in on the call from the public that would like to speak on this. I know we have the the company available for questions, but is there is there any resident that wish, is wishing to speak? Okay. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, Madam Chair um, this is go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Wells. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll move to approve the variance application number 900 for 15409 Laurelton Drive, followed by Transforming Architecture for recommendation to the Board of Appeals. I'll second. Thank Wilson. you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Quillen. If you would please call the roll. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Wilson? I vote aye. Chairwoman Batman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item four, amended site and landscape plan application and resolution number 20-05-PC. Olive on Main, 504 Main Street, filed by Nadal Hishma. Included in this agenda item is the public hearing on the application and final action by the Planning Commission. We'll now hear the staff report. Good evening, Madam Chair and fellow board members. Amendment site and landscape plan application was filed on March 9, 2020 by Nadal Hishman to enclose existing patio and construct a roof with four skylights over existing outdoor located at 504 Main Street, Lower Merlin 2070. Under date of March 10, 2020, the application and a cover letter asking for comments were sent to the state and local agencies and a memorandum to the City of Law Departments. Comments from the local, state, agency, and City of Law Departments are stated in the staff reports. On March 12, 2020, a letter explaining the nature of the application and advising of the scheduled public hearing before the City of Law Planning Commission was sent by standard mail to all contingent property owners. All return receipts were received. The file contains a affidavit signed by the applicant attesting that a zoning sign has been placed on the subject property, has remained and shall remain until a decision is reached by the planning commission. 
It is recommended that the City of Lower Planning Commission approve the amended site and landscape plan for 504 Main Street with the following conditions. The applicant shall obtain all required City of Lower permits. All construction equipment must access the property through the driveway located in the rear of the building. The applicant must obtain City of, of Law Historic District Commission approval. The applicant shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations in the development of the property. That concludes the reading of the file, Madam Chairwoman. Thank, thank you. Uh, I will check with uh, commissioners and council president if there are any questions. Mr. Welford? No questions. I would just uh, like to say that I think it's a very good idea and for the restaurant to open under the uh, reopen under the COVID-19 uh, conditions is probably very necessary. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Yeah, I concur with Mr. Um, Welford's analysis. This is a great investment and very supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Sidnar. No questions, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And I do not have any questions and I too um, I think this is a, a great idea and um, look forward to it if, if, if it passes. Um, at this time, I have, would like to open the public hearing on this item. We did not have anyone signed up in advance to speak. Uh, we do have the applicant, I believe, on the phone if there are any questions um, for the applicant from the commissioners, I forgot to mention that. But at this point, I would like to open the public hearing and I will pause to see if anyone on the line would like to speak. Okay, I would like to, at this point, hearing no one, I will close the public hearing. And if there are no further questions, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, uh, I would like to make a motion for the amended site and landscape plan application and resolution number 20-05-PC for Olive Horn, Maine, 503 Main Street, filed by Nadal Hishma um, for approval as, uh, as recommended by staff with their conditions. I second, this is Rick. Thank you. Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item five, the amended site and landscape plan application and resolution number 20 06-PC, El Paraiso Bar and Grill at 143 Bowie Road, fil filed by Jonathan Valletta. And this agenda item includes the public hearing on the application and the final action by Planning Commission. This time I'll ask for the staff report. Good evening again, Madam Chair and fellow board members. Amended site and landscape plan application was filed on March 13, 2020 by Johnson Villard to construct a deck on the side of existing building located at 143 Bowie Road, Laurel, Maryland 20707. Under date of April 10, 2020, the application and a cover letter asking for comments were sent to the state and local agency and a memorandum to the city of law departments. Comments from the local, state agency, and city of law departments are stated in the staff reports. On April 28, 2020, a letter explaining the nature of the application and advising of the scheduled public hearing before the City of Law Planning Commission was sent by standard mail to all contingency property owners. All receipts were received. A file contains an affidavit signed by the applicant 
attesting that a zoning sign has been placed on the subject property has remained and shall remain until the decision is reached by the planning commission it is recommended that the city of law planning commission approve the amended site and landscape plan for 143 Bowie road with the following conditions the applicant shall obtain a city of law deck permit prior to construction the applicant shall secure the deck with approved bollard type by the office of fire marshal and permit services. The applicant shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations in the development of the property. And the applicant shall ensure that all food preparation take place inside the building located at 143 Bowie Road. The applicant is on the line for any question. That concludes the reading of the file, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions from commissioners? Mr. Wilson. No qu questions here, thank you. Mr. Welford. No, thank you. Council President Sidnor. No questions, ma'am. Thank you. At, at this time, I will open the public hearing on this application. We did not have anyone sign up in advance to speak. I will pause so that if anyone wants to speak, they can take their uh, call off of mute. Hearing no one, I will close the public hearing. And if there are no questions for either staff or the applicant who is on the phone, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, this is Rick Wilson. I will uh, move to approve the amended site landscape plan application and, res and including the resolution number 20-06-PC for the El Pariso Bar and Grill at 143 Bowie Road. And I wanna commend the staff on a great report. Thank you. Bill Welford, I will re uh, second Mr. Wilson's motion. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Wilson? I vote aye. Mr. Welford? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item six, the detailed MXT final plan, west side application, and resolution number 20-04-PC, commercial, 136 I'm sorry, 13601 and 14501 West Side Boulevard, filed by Strip Matter Land, LLC. This agenda item includes the public hearing on the application and the final action by the Planning Commission. At this time, I will ask for the staff report. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The applicant, Strip Matter County LLC, is seeking a detailed MEXT site plan approval develop one 10,000 square foot retail building and associated site amenities on lot three, which include dry vials, sidewalks, site lighting, parking, and stormwater management facilities located in the area known as Westside Shops. There will be two vehicle access points from Westside Boulevard and four vehicle access points from the proposed townhouse community into the commercial area. The Unified Land Development Code requires that one parking space per 200 square feet of gross leasable area. Lot three will include a 10,000 square foot retail building, which will require 50 parking spaces. The applicant will provide 65 parking spaces for lot three, which includes four ADA spaces. The applicant will also provide an additional 26 parking spaces for the benefit of lot one and lot two for a total of 91 parking spaces for this application. Uh, the applicant meets all landscaping requirements per the code. Per, per the applicant's traffic signal warrant analysis results, along with the recommendation of a number of city departments, the applicant will be required to install a traffic signal at the Van Dusen Road, Westside Boulevard, Anderson Way intersection. Staff recommends that the City of Rural Planning Commission approve the detailed MXT, MXT site plan for Westside Shops, Lot 3, Application 903, with the following conditions. All construction shall conform to ordinance number 1940, as well as the detailed MXT site and landscape plan as approved by the City of Rural Planning Commission. 
the applicant must obtain all required city of Laurel permits. The manual on uniform traffic control device standard stop sign and stop bars needs to be placed at both entrances prior to exiting Westside Boulevard. The applicant must apply for a traffic signal permit with the State Highway Administration within 60 days of the passage of Westside Residential Application 902 or Westside Shops Lot 3 Application 903, whichever is first, and must install a traffic signal at Van Dusen Road, Westside Boulevard, Anderson Way intersection within seven months of the final State Highway Administration permit issuance for the installation of the traffic signal. The applicant shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations the development of, for the development of the property. And now I'll invite the applicant's representative, Ed Gibbs, to speak about this portion of the project. Yes, uh, good evening, um, Chair Bettman, members of the Planning Commission, uh, Council President Sidner, Edward Gibbs here. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, Strip Matter Land, LLC, and Strip Matter Conti, uh, LLC. Uh, let me just uh, do a little housekeeping here at the outset and indicate that we have a number of folks who went ahead and registered uh, to speak, including Mr. Rob Strip Matter and Blake Etheris, both of uh, Strip Matter. Uh, we do not anticipate that they will be uh, that their testimony will be necessary, but uh, certainly they are available for questions. Uh, similarly, uh, on the commercial uh, final site plan, we have uh, signed up Mr. Brandon Rowe, uh, uh, who is our uh, civil engineer, uh, and Mr. Mike Lenhart, who uh, is our tra traffic engineer. Again, uh, they're both available for questions. Uh, as everyone on the commission is uh, certainly uh, aware and familiar, this has uh, been a longstanding project, uh, one which my client and I have been very uh, pleased to be involved in with the city of Laurel uh, and the partnership that we've been able to forge during uh, during the years that this uh, this project has moved forward. Um, you will recall that when we came in to revise the conceptual site plan, um, we, uh, we had experienced substantial difficulty in attracting a uh, grocery store anchor for the commercial component. And therefore we sought approval and uh, you and the city council and mayor were kind enough to grant that approval to downsize the commercial component to approximately 40,000 square feet and uh, to include 81 townhomes uh, in the area, the surplus area that was originally intended to be devoted to uh, the larger commercial component. So this particular site plan, we have two this evening, but this particular site plan uh, is for one of the uh, four lots that will comprise the commercial component when we came in after obtaining approval of the revision to the conceptual site plan, we were uh, able to obtain approval of a new preliminary subdivision plan. Uh, obviously, uh, the four lots that were created uh, with that preliminary subdivision plan have not gone to record yet. They cannot until after approval of this detailed site plan. Uh, but, the, uh, but the site plan you have before you does in fact uh, reflect that additional land area. Uh, so there will be two points uh, of access, of direct access in from West Side Boulevard. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the, the primary access point will result in a private road running through the commercial component uh, with lots one and two uh, to the south and uh, lots three and four to the north. So this particular plan is for what will be lot three. Um, it will be a retail building consisting of 10,000 square feet, uh, which can be devoted to any number of tenants, uh, probably somewhere between four and seven individual tenants, depending upon uh, type of demand, how much square footage an individual tenant will need, uh, et cetera. 
The elevations which have been filed with the application uh, show um, attention to detail, uh, attractive buildings, we believe, uh, br brick from a grade up to a point of about 10 feet. Uh, beyond that, uh, EFIS, uh, attractive glazing for the doors, uh, canopies uh, over the uh, entrances, uh, light. Uh, light sconces uh, affixed to the brick walls and an attractive uh, rooftop treatment, uh, sort of a parapet treatment at the top of the wall. Uh, we have presented architecture that has views of all four sides of the building. Uh, the, um, the architecture for the rear of the building is also quite attractive, we think. We've uh, put a lot of uh, uh, attention into that. Again, it has brick from grade up to 10 feet and EFIS uh, above that. So with that having been said, uh, we would uh, we would indicate that uh, we would we agree uh, with the staff recommendation. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to walk, work with um, Mr. Love and Ms. Pulley um, on processing this detailed site plan. Uh, we also agree with all of the conditions uh, which have been recommended by the staff in their report, uh, including the uh, condition with regard to the traffic signal. Uh, we have in fact filed our traffic signal warrant study with the State Highway Administration. Uh, you know, we said all along years ago from the inception of this project that we thought a traffic signal would be found warranted uh, at the intersection of Van Dusen Road and Westside Boulevard, uh, and that that would occur at this phase of the development. And uh, we believe that will come to fruition. Uh, we received uh, positive feedback from the State Highway Administration, and uh, we completely agree with the uh, condition, which requires us to uh, file the actual permit for the signal. The warrant analysis has already been uh, filed and reviewed. Uh, we'll file the permit within 60 days from the approval of the site plan, and the, uh, the signal will be installed within seven months from the date of issuance of the permit to install by the State Highway Administration. Um, our traffic consultant, Mr. Lenhart, has indicated that uh, in general, uh, it will take somewhere between four and six months to install the signal once the permit has been issued. Um, and so we asked for seven months just to uh, provide for any unexpected uh, timing uh, contingency that we might encounter. And uh, I think those timelines were pretty much agreed with uh, by your public works department. Mr. Love could certainly weigh in on that. But with that having been said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, as is all of the uh, members of our team, um, and uh, I'll defer at this point. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. Um, if I could first ask the commissioners, are there any questions for staff? Mr. Welford? No. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, just just one. I know that uh, the original uh, preliminary site plan uh, garnered a tremendous amount of attention from the surrounding community. Have we heard anything? I'm asking staff. Have we heard anything uh, relative to this uh, uh, final site plan? Uh, Commissioner Wilson, we received I received one phone call in the past uh, three months uh, from a citizen out there just asking for information. They were wanting a, uh, were wondering if there was going to be a traffic light that was going to be included with this. I did inform them that yes, we were going to require one, and they were pleased with that answer. Okay, and then there was uh, um, basically an agreement on, you know, how much retail versus how much residential, and I believe uh, that this is in compliance with kind of that general understanding that, that the community understood. Is that true? That is that is correct. Um, if you recall, in previous um, the, 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 in previous meetings, uh, we've had conditions that require them to file both the building permit for the commercial area at the same time that they file for the residential area. That was the concern that maybe uh, they were gonna, there was going to be maybe an extension of the residential, but with that condition, that ensures that there is in fact coming in. 
That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council President Signor. No question. No question for staff. I have a question for the applicant when he's the floor is well, open for him. Council President, please go ahead. Okay, uh, you, this might be redundant. Um, you said on the 10,000 square feet for shopping, you said you can't commit to a grocery store yet. Did I, did I misinterpret something? Uh, uh, Council President Sidnor, Edward Gibbs again, responding to your question. Um, no, we originally, uh, we had been hopeful that we would have a retail center of some, you know, 125,000 square feet. Uh, that would have required a grocery store anchor. Uh, we probably spent uh, over four years trying to find a grocery store anchor, um, and that world has dramatically changed. Uh, what, what with uh, you know the impact of uh, the impact of Amazon, the impact of online uh, shopping, uh, the the really the rollback of uh, of expansion on the part of grocery stores uh and then uh you know the fact that there simply aren't a lot of rooftops in this area right now so um that is what prompted us to to go back before uh the planning commission and the mayor and council uh to uh to to come come forward with a more reasonable retail component and that is 40,000 square feet so there will not be uh, a grocery store anchor for this center uh, any longer. Uh, it's just, it's just, we, we, you know, we we went to every grocery store two and three times, uh, and just couldn't uh, couldn't get any interest whatsoever. So we will not have a grocery store, and and I would say that, you know, we've had substantial interaction with the community. Um, with uh with the the residents of the 56 townhomes that make up part of west side as well as the uh residents of the uh multifamily component uh and we have explained this problem to them uh they were initially disappointed as we all were uh but um i think it's fair to say they understood for you um do you know it um, I know it's probably too early to tell right now, but have anyone committed, any other retail stores committed to coming out of the area yet by name? Um, we are we are very close. Uh, uh, we have substantial interest. I would uh, actually defer to Mr. Blake Escherich uh, on that uh, particular question, but I don't think we're at liberty to uh, to use a name uh, of a retail user who we believe is very close at this point, um, uh, but but we we are in fact close with uh, a couple. Thank you. I think I, I kind of figured that. I was thought maybe I just asked anyway. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank yes, you, sir. Council President. Mr. Wilson, any questions for the applicant? Or any of those additional people attending with the applicant? No, oh, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Welford? Uh, yes, Mr. Gibb, uh, I haven't been out there in a, in a week or more, and I'm not sure. Am I correct in thinking that that traffic signal will also control the traffic at Royal Farms? Um, you know what? I'd ask Mr. Lenhart, who is uh, signed up and on the line, to respond to that. I know it's directly across from uh, from the Royal Farm, but Mr. Lenhart would be the best person to respond to that question. Yes. Hello. Good evening. This is Mike Lenhart with Lenhart Traffic Consulting. That is accurate. The signal would be located uh, today. It's a, there's a four-way intersection. Van Dusen is the main line on. The, um, the northwest side is the West Side Boulevard um, a driveway that goes back into our site. And then on the opposite side is the Anderson Corner uh, access that goes in and serves the residential and the Royal Farms on the other side of the street. So, yes, that four legged intersection will be signalized. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Good question, Mr. Welford. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Welford? 
No, thank you. Okay, at this time, I will open the public hearing on this application, uh, uh, this West Side application. We do not have anybody previously signed up. However, I will pause to see if there is anyone on the call that would like to speak. Hearing no one, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, this is Rick Wilson. I'll move to approve the detailed MXT final plan uh, for the West Side application and, and the resolution number 20-04-PC uh, for 13601 and 14501 West Side Boulevard uh, with the technical report from staff included in the motion. Do I have a second? A second. The motion. Thank you, Mr. Welford. Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving to agenda item seven, the detailed MXT final plan West Side application and resolution number 20-03-PC residential 13601 and 14501 west side boulevard filed by street matter land llc the agenda item includes the public hearing on the application as well as the final action by the planning commission we'll now have the staff report good evening once again madam chair and commission members the applicant, Strip Matter County LLC, is seeking a detailed MXT site plan approval to develop 81 townhomes and associated site amenities inclusive of drive aisle sidewalks, site lighting, parking, phone water, management facilities. The amenities include a pavilion area, a tot lot, and a dog park. There will be vehicle access points from West Side Boulevard, access to commercial area, and six private roads within the residential area. Per Unified Land Development Code, three parking spaces are required per dwelling unit for a total of 243 parking spaces. Each townhouse will be providing four parking spaces for a total of 324 parking spaces. In total, there will be 428 parking spaces for the residential area. The proposed landscaping meets the requirements of the Unified Land Development Code and City of Laurel Landscaping Manual. This includes the landscaping along internal roadways and within the community. At the June 11, 2019 Planning Commission, the revised conceptual site plan was approved. During this meeting and the pre previous held on April 9, 2019, it was agreed upon by the developer that they would build a clubhouse facility to be used by the existing townhouse residents, as well as the new residents of the proposed townhouse community, should it be approved by the existing townhouse residents homeowner association. After meetings and discussion by the members of the Homeowners Association, an agreement could not be reached for the clubhouse. The applicant is proposing a 864 square foot pavilion with a roof, no walls, and an open grass area. The applicant is seeking a reduction in the amount owed for the mandatory fee and move for open space as allowed per section 20-29.10 of the Unified Land Development Code. While there will be Various open spaces provided. These will be privately owned and maintained by a homeowners association to be created for the development. Section 20-2910F does allow for the reduction of fee and lieu if the planning commission finds that it is in the public interest to do so. The Unified Land Development Code does not state how to go about coming up with the reduction amount for the private open space. Per the recommendation of the city solicitor, the applicant will be able to propose a reduction in fee and lieu in the amount of 3% of the assessed value of the proposed private open space area. Resolution 19-13-PC was approved on November 19, 2019, which included a condition that required a fee and lieu payment of $101,250. The 3% of the assessed value of the proposed pavilion area dog park and tot lot is $15,585.03. If approved, the fee and lieu will be reduced to $85,654.97. Staff recommends that the City of Laurel Planning Commission approve the detailed MXT site plan for Westside Residential Application 902 with the following conditions. All construction shall conform to Ordinance 
number 1940, as well as the detailed MXT site and landscape plan as approved by the City of Laurel Planning Commission. The applicant must obtain all required City of Laurel permits. All roadways must be constructed per City of Laurel Public Works standards as stated in the detailed MXT site plan. The manual on uniform traffic control device standard stop signs need to be placed at all intersections along the minor street sides. The applicant must apply for a traffic signal permit for with the State Highway Administration within 60 days of the passage of the West Side Residential Application 902 or West Side Shops Library Application 903, whichever is first, and must install a traffic signal at Van Dusen Road, West Side Boulevard, and Anderson Way intersection within seven months of the final State Highway Administration permit issuance for the installation of the traffic signal. The applicant is granted a reduction in payment for the mandatory, mandatory open space fee in lieu, reducing the amount owed to $85,664.97. Prior to the issue of the first building permit, the applicant shall create a homeowners association and provide documents to the city in connection with the homeowners association demonstrating that the private open space and all equipment, furniture, and other improvements within the private open space shall be privately owned and maintained by the Homeowners Association in perpetuity. Prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the applicant shall submit to the city, of, city a recorded declaration of covenants running with the land in favor of the current owners of the private open space, its successors, and the sign that includes a provision restricting the use of the private open space to park and recreational purposes in perpetuity. Said Declaration of Covenant shall also include a provision that said covenant can be amended, defeated, or eliminated only with the consent of the mayor and city council of rural. The applicant shall comply with all applicable local, state, and federal laws and regulations in the development of the property. And now I will invite uh, Mr. Gibbs, uh, the applicant's representative, to speak on this portion of the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Love. Once again, um, Chair Bettman, members of the Planning Commission, and um, Council President Sidner, uh, Edward Gibbs, uh, an attorney with offices in Largo, uh, here representing the uh, applicant and owner of uh, Strip Matter Conti, LLC, and of course, Strip Matter Land, LLC, the uh, parent holder. Uh, we have all of the same individuals, uh, again, signed up in this case. They're available for questions. In addition, uh, we also have on this, uh, on this site plan, Jessica McMahon, who is registered to speak. She is a representative of NBR. Uh, they will be the builder uh, of the townhomes covered by this detailed site plan. And... Um, you may recall that MBR was also the builder of the 56 townhomes that are already constructed uh, within the West Side community. Um, the, uh, if you look at, at the site plan itself, and I don't know whether uh, uh, Mr. Love can get that up or someone can get that up. Um, basically, uh, you know, all, in both the commercial and the residential portion of this development. All of the interior roads are going to be private roads, privately maintained. Uh, access points will come off of West Side Boulevard. So uh, whereas in the commercial detailed site plan case, I mentioned that there were two access points off of West Side Boulevard. Uh, technically, those two access points can also be used to gain access to the residential component. Uh, in addition, um, there is a, a third access point off of uh, West Side Boulevard as it turns to the west uh, along the northern edge of these 81 uh, townhomes. Uh, and then the private roads that are on the interior of the community, and basically the community is laid out somewhat uh, uh, in a horseshoe shape, I would say, uh, and there are a number of private roads, and each of those private roads will intersect with and will allow access into the commercial component. So uh, what that really achieves for us in terms of the development is to uh, avoid uh, and minimize uh, the number of cars which might be going out onto West Side Boulevard, particularly if uh, 
if residents of the townhouse community are going to the commercial section and for whatever reason they can't walk uh, because of what they might want to be carrying back to their homes. Um, in any event, uh, there's there's just a um, a synergy I think that's created with the with the private roads intersecting. Um, the the residential component uh, is centered around a village green, which is characterized with a pavilion. There are pavers outside the pavilion, and then grass areas as well. You will all recall uh, that we. Um, had met with the not just the multifamily residents, but also the residents of the 56 townhomes already in and part of Westside. Um, when when we were uh, pursuing the conceptual site plan approval uh, and then the preliminary subdivision plan approval, we made a commitment uh, that we would work with the existing townhouse HOA. Um, and that we would agree to construct a 1,500 square foot clubhouse um, if the 56 unit homeowners association could garner the necessary votes to annex uh, the, the homeowners areas within the new portion of the townhome. So uh, the the commitment was that uh, the 81 townhomes would then become part of the existing homeowners association. Uh, my client would build uh, the 1500 square foot clubhouse with all the amenities that we had specified. Um, the, and then we would have, of course, the dog park, the tot lot, and the extra parking. Uh, we would end up with one homeowners association uh, for for all of the units, the 56 and the 81, um, we we worked uh, very very hard with the existing homeowners association. Uh, we we actually ended up having great relationships that were formed with the leadership team within the existing HOA. Uh, we worked with their management company uh, to provide them uh, estimates. Uh, which allowed them to prepare a budget which uh, they would need to sustain with their dues uh, in, in order to maintain the clubhouse uh, and the, uh, the dog park, etc. cetera. Um, you, you know, we, we really were pulling for the existing HOA to be able to get the votes they needed. We actually extended the timeline on a couple different occasions uh, we offered encouragement to them. We we offered to help out in any way we could. Uh, they did uh, have a vote, and um, they actually extended the time for uh, individuals to vote. And unfortunately, they were not able to garner the required number of votes to annex this HOA. So uh, we fell back to, then to the pavilion which had been the original proposal. And that's what we have uh, today. Um, there are elevations of the pavilion area. I, it is attractive. You know, they have brick base for all the piers that support the roof, uh, the hip roof, I believe, with, uh, you know, which adds to the attractiveness of the feature. It'll, it'll be a natural gathering space uh, for members of the community. Um, the units themselves, you know, one of, one of the really big concerns that the existing townhome owners in Westside had was that uh, that what we would build out here would not impair the quality of their home. And um, and I I believe it's very very clear if you look at the architecture that we have filed um, that they are going to get equal or better uh architecture and um and just the the amenities in the townhomes themselves uh nvr is going to be offering the mendelssohn and the schubert uh they have the identical fronts the only difference uh is that the mendelssohn is 36 feet deep and the schubert model is 42 feet deep um but both of those models were also offered 
those, those were the two architectural models offered in the 56 townhomes that are already built. They'll be offered here again. Uh, they're slightly updated, um, but again, the quality uh, is every bit the same as what was, uh, what was originally constructed. So we're going to end up with a product type that, that at a minimum is the same and uh, likely will be uh, even better with the architectural, with the slight architectural update. Um, the, uh, the only other thing I'd mention is that when we were before you for the preliminary subdivision plan, uh, you know, all of our uh, amenities are going to be private for these 81 units. And so, um, so we had to pay a fee in lieu and that number was $101,250. Uh, at the, you may recall that at the time of the uh, hearing before you on the preliminary plan, I raised the issue of the, uh, uh, of the ordinance authorization to obtain a credit uh, against the fee and lieu payment for the uh, facilities that we were providing. Uh, and, and so um, I, uh, we talked about that during the processing of this detailed site plan. Um, your planning staff referred the matter to Mr. Cobb, your attorney, and uh, the the three percent number was arrived at, which results in a credit of about fifteen thousand dollars and some change. So the fee in lieu reduces to eighty five thousand and some change. So we we would, even though there's no uh, formula for that uh, to be computed. Uh, we would go ahead and request uh, that you approve that credit uh, as um, as calculated by the uh, by the city attorney, Mr. Top. Uh, with that being said, uh, again, Ms. McMahon is here on the line, and she can respond to any questions anyone may have relative to the units themselves. Uh, I can tell you that MVR had uh, just amazing success with uh with the 56 units that they uh constructed and i know they're excited to be able to move forward with this product and add to the um the single the uh, single family attached fee simple home ownership opportunity here in west side with that being said i'll sign off and answer any questions anyone may have thank you thank you mr gibbs um, what, what I'll do this time as I go around, and I did note that Commissioner John Kish has joined us. Um, welcome. Um, Rick Wilson, do you have any questions for staff or the applicant, if you would direct them specifically to either one? Uh, none at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Welford. Um, just a couple points of clarification to the applicant. Um, so the uh, pavilion, um, what, what uh, useful purpose is that going to have? Will there be like picnic tables in there or something like that to gather at? To gather? Yes, uh, that's my understanding. Uh, it's going to be an opportunity for, for, first of all, I mean, people can cook out uh, in the pavilion area. Uh, but in addition, uh, the, community, the community will be able to have events uh in this green area and beneath the pavilion um and we're anticipating it will be um hoa type uh events um where there may be celebrations in the spring and the fall uh i guess there's always the possibility there could be uh a, a music offering uh that could occur there but uh but yes it's it's a it's a gathering space um where uh, members of the community can come together uh, and share in their community. Okay, but that wouldn't be um, accessible by people that are coming to the commercial side for shopping. Really? No, that, that is correct. No, it access, is not. They wouldn't have access to it. No, it is intended solely for the members of the 81 townhome. Okay, and um, one other thing, just for clarification, is it correct that um, the address numbers 13601 and 14501 are the same on the uh, on the agenda here for the commercial and the um, residential? 
Well, uh, I'll stand corrected by someone who may have a better grasp of that, but I, I think that um, those numbers are just reflective of the property as it exists today. Um, obviously, each individual residential unit is going to have its own street address, and uh, and and then the the commercial uses on the four individual lots will have their individual addresses and for the larger buildings for instance the you know the 10,000 square foot building that you approved just a few minutes ago uh individual units will probably have the same address but with a different unit number and uh Mr. uh Blake Escherick is here he can re reply to that if I'm wrong in any way uh, I was just uh confused a little because on uh Item six and item seven, they both have the same same numbers. Mm -hmm. Look right. I, yeah, I, I just think that's because as we sit here today, it, it, you know, the property has not yet been legally divided. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Welford? No, thank you. Mr. Kish, any questions? I have none, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry um, I'm late getting on. No problem, no thank problem. you for being here. Um, I just wanted to, for a point of clarification, um, both applications, the one that we approved and this one, refer to the requirement for the traffic light and the applications and all of that. Those. That is one application, correct? It was that just is, included in both. That is correct, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Council President Sidnor, do you have any questions for staff or the applicant? No, ma'am, I have no questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this time, I would like to open the public hearing on this application for the residential uh, application at Westside. Is there anyone on the phone wishing to speak? Hearing no one, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I will move to approve the detailed MXP final plan, Westside application, and the resolution number 20-03-PC, residential, 13601 and 14501 Westside Boulevard, filed by Script Matter Land, LLC. As presented by staff and any recommendations from staff. Do I have a second? I'm Madam second. Chair? I'm sorry, Madam Chair? Yes. This is this is Larry Taub, City Attorney. Yes. Um, I, I would like to see if the uh, maker of the motion could add a particular finding that the credit for the fee and lieu of recreation facilities is in the public interest, if that is what indeed the, the board believes or the commission believes. Okay, oh, um, let me just verify. I don't have the staff report, but Mr. Love, is that that is also written in the staff report? Is that correct? Yes, that's, that's included in the analysis and within the condition, it, it is talking of the reduction. And there, so I believe, and I'll, I'll defer to Larry on this. If you want it to say the reduction, and then say it is in the public interest at the end of it, is that what you're wanting, Larry? Yes, I just think that should be a part of the motion. That it should be stated specifically that the commission finds that that uh, the credit is in fact in the public interest. Yes. Okay, Madam Chair, that would be that would be condition number six. And, and and Mr. Love, could you read that? And then Mr. Welford, if after he reads that, if that is acceptable to you, will you please confirm? And then I'll ask for a second. Yes, uh, condition six right now says the applicant is granted a reduction in payment for the mandatory mandatory open space fee in lieu, reducing the amount to $85,664.97. Um, if I could uh, just uh, give you a comment, that's fine, but I still think that the, um, the commission in its motion 
needs to state that it is, in fact, that the commission finds that it is in the public interest to grant the credit. That, that should be part of the motion as well. Yes. Um, I, this Bill Welford, I will correct the uh, or change the motion to be as uh, made, but to also add that it is in the uh, public interest that the uh, condition number six be part of the motion that uh, for the two yeah, they're cool. Carlos, welcome. Do I have a second? I I will second. This is Rick Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, and thank you, Mr. Taub, for raising that. Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And if there are, um, before Mr. Gibbs and team sign off, um, Ms. Quillen or, or Mr. Gibbs, if there are things that I need to sign, um, let the office know and we'll work it out as to how we'll get those signatures on. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much to uh, everyone. Ed Gibbs here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item eight, and before Mr. Wilson's ice fully melts, um, to the 2019 planning report resolution number 20-07-PC. If we could have someone from staff, please. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioners. The city is required under the land use article of state law to have the annual report approved and submitted to the state by July 1st of every year. For 2019, 49 new residential permits were issued all within the public funding area. The city is not required to submit a five-year mid-cycle comprehensive plan at this time. There were no land use changes, annexations, rezonings, new schools constructed, or changes in the water or sewer category services for the city last year. However, there were five text amendments approved in 2019 that changed regulations in the city's unified land development code, which were amendment chapter 20, land development article one, division five, section 20-1.7, section 20-6.13, and section 20-7.8 to allow for tourist homes in certain residential zones. Amendment chapter 20, article one, Division 7, Section 20-17.2, Section 20-17.3, Section 20-17.5, Section 20-18.2, and Section 20-18.3 of the code to allow for existing billboards to be converted to digital billboards. Amendment Chapter 20, Land Development Article 1, Section 20-1.7, 20-6.13 to add medical health campus to the code and to be permitted by right in certain residential zones. Amendment chapter 20, article one, division one, section 20-1.7, division six, section 20-16.10, and division 14, section 20-26.15 of the code to amend paving regulations for driveways and parking pads. And the last one, Amendment Chapter 20, Article 1, Division 1, Section 20-1.7, and Division 9, Section 20-20.5 of the Code to allow electric security fences in the Industrial General and Industrial Commercial Services Zones. All members of the Planning Commission have been trained, and this concludes the reading of the Annual Report for 2019, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Christian. Are there any questions for Christian on the report? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'll Bill Welford. Go ahead, Rick. No, go ahead, Bill. I'll, uh, Madam Chair, I'll, enter, I'll make a motion to approve the 2019 planning report and to include the resolution number 20-07-PC 
as presented and read by staff. I'll second, this is Rick. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Uh, Ms. Quillen, if you would please call the roll. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Before I conclude the meeting, I would like to thank Christian and all of the, the city staff for helping the commissioners prepare for this meeting. I'd like to thank the applicants and the participants on the call. And I'd also like to a uh, special thank you to the mayor, council president Sidnor and the council and all of the staff at the city for everything you're doing for the residents during this difficult time and continuing the business of the city. Um, thank you very, very much. And that is all the business we have. This meeting is adjourned.